so in my last video on the M3, I fixed some rust issues and I also fixed all of the rear subframe issues I had and built a really beefy uh, reinforcement for the rear of the chassis. So I figured while I got everything blown apart anyway, it's time to go ahead and do what I initially thought was going to be the first thing I did on this car and do the SMG to manual swap. So the first thing I need to do now is remove the intake so I can get the SMG pump out from under the intake, uh, remove all the lines for the SMG, and then I can pull the transmission out. And then we'll get to working on doing the detents in the transmission where we'll have to split it apart and do some machining and make that work so I'll have detents in the shifter. So we'll get to working on the front of the car and then we'll start pulling the transmission out. Uh, so I'm working on getting the air box off. I've already got the uh, air intake tube out of the way and the uh, shock tower brace. I may actually have some help working on this car. Something fell. <laughs> I heard something go clink. clink. She's back. I'm dripping alien goo all over my car. <laughs> alien swamp. Oh. Is it heavy? It's pretty heavy. That's at least seven, eight pounds. Oh yeah. After removing the SMG pump, we also removed the starter, then went under the car, unhooked everything from the transmission, took out the transmission cross member, and unbolted all the bell housing bolts. We thought we should be able to pull the transmission at that point, but after yanking on it for a while, we found one more thing had to be undone for it to come out. Okay. So we tried to get the transmission out, and that was stopping us the whole time. There's the plate that goes between the trans and the engine, and it goes behind the flywheel. And one little bolt, this tiny little thing, was stopping us from pulling the transmission. The plate formed around the head of the bolt, so we couldn't get a wrench on it. So, that took care of it. So now we can pull the transmission out. There we go. That's the way to do it. Can you pick it up? Yeah. Real close to smashing my handle. There she is. Yeah, that's a big girl. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that the transmission is out, we need to split off this piece. This is what's commonly referred to as the bell housing, and it does have the bell housing, but it's also kind of the like front quarter of the transmission case. So the reason we have to do this is in these two holes right here, there's going to be some pins and springs that go in here and we'll have to machine these holes to accept that, but that's going to be the detents for the shifter. Uh, we also have to uh, add a torsion spring in here that's going to be uh, the spring feedback for the shifter so it'll center it, and then you know the detents will give you that nice click feeling that you feel whenever you shift a shifter back and forth. So I already have all the bolts out of here, so I'm going to try to split it off, and then we'll take it over to Wesley's dad's and see if we can get it machined off the dowels now. There's probably going to be some pins that'll fall out of here. Oh, I just heard one fall. There it went. So these little pins here, what they do is they go on the shaft here and then they engage. There's a little cross down in here and this is what moves back and forth. And you can see this is where our tent pins will go through so, now I need to take this over to Wesley's and we'll see if we can have this machined. We rigged the bell housing on the seat and guide machine, which is basically just a fancy drill press made for doing cylinder head work. The fixture normally used for cylinder heads worked well with the bell housing and we were able to drill the holes for our detents. First, we drilled a 5 8 hole all the way through that allowed the pins to slip through the bell housing. And then we drilled an 18 millimeter hole, which accepts the bushings that the pins ride in. The 18 millimeter hole is not drilled all the way through so that there is a step for the bushing to stop on when you're pressing it into the bell housing. So one of the most daunting tasks when it comes to converting your E46 M3 from SMG to manual is converting the bell housing to work with the shifter. You can use a race style shifter that has its own centering spring and a reverse lockout. Uh, I didn't want to do that because they're very expensive and I've had cars with a reverse lockout 
and it's kind of aggravating when you're uh, doing it on a streetcar. You can have companies convert it, or you can buy a, a bale housing that is four or six feet. Those are hard to find and expensive, so we decided to do the machining ourselves. So this pin sticks through, and it'll go all the way through. There'll be the bearing on the bottom side of this, and as that bearing goes against this, it'll push it back. The pin is in the bushing, which keeps it moving freely. That pushes down on the spring, and you'll have, get that good click whenever the shifter goes in. And as you can see, I have the shifter installed. Right now it's not doing anything. You have the detents for the uh, front and back, but there's nothing as far as left and right. So we have it drilled through for the pin and we have the diameter to press in the bushing. So then the problem is you have to install a seal and a snap ring to retain the spring and to keep trash out of your transmission and keep the transmission fluid in. The hard part is doing the snap ring. If you have a milling machine, it's really no issue. You can uh, mount this up, you know, go around on the table and you've got a snap ring group. We don't have a milling machine. So what we decided to do was cut threads for a three-quarter fine thread plug, and I'm going to get three-quarter fine thread set, uh, set screws. That should be in today, and we will just ditch this seal, put in the bushing and the pin and the spring, and then thread in our set screws with a little bit of thread sealant, and that should be good to go. Um, also, I'll be uh, drilling out for a set screw just so uh, whenever I drill in my three-quarter set screw, I can put a small set screw on the side, lock it down, and it's not going anywhere. Uh, probably not needed, but it's good peace of mind. Since that's figured out, and while I'm waiting on my set screws, I need to go ahead and get this converted. So I have to add a spring and add in a bearing to the bottom of this, and that's going to be like the wheel that goes up against these detent pins, and that's what's going to be pressing on the pin itself. Uh, the only other machining I have to do is adding a stop for the spring uh, and it's going to go into this boss right here. So I'm going to show you how to do that step by step and uh, then hopefully my set screws will be in and we'll have the conversion on the bell housing done. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is take this piece out. There's a cap head screw with a six millimeter Allen head. Take it out, pull this up and then our spring will wrap around it. So this just slides right out and we can put our bearing on the bottom side. Here's the bearing we're gonna be installing. I got the bearing and spring on McMaster card and you can find the part numbers for this stuff online. So this bearing is gonna to have to press on here and it may take a little bit of force. So what I'm gonna do is put this in the freezer and I already got my bushings for this in the freezer. That'll shrink it up and then I should be able to press it on. So while I'm waiting on that to freeze up and while I have all these parts out of the way, it'd be a good time to drill and tap this for this bolt I'm going to put in here. And that's, all that is is a stop for the spring. This doesn't have to be super accurate because you're going to be adjusting it on the spring uh, in order for it to work. And it's just a stop. Uh, some instructions online say you have to put a pin in here, but you don't have to do that. That's how it was done from the factory, but this is just a quarter 20 uh, socket head uh, screw. I put a little Loctite on it to keep it from going anywhere and it'll work perfect. So I used the shorter bit to get it started, uh, but I have to switch to a longer bit in order to get past this lip here. So I had a 1364 with a hex drive and put in an extension and that should work and the short hole will keep this contraction uh, stable while I'm drilling. I put this little flag on here so I'll know uh, not to drill too deep. I got it about half inch to five eighths thread engagement. Uh, that should be plenty, maybe even too much, but it's there's plenty of meat to drill down in here. good. All right, so now I got the screw in there and that should work just fine for the stop. So now I'm going to try to get my bearing pressed on to that arm and I've got the bearing on the heat gun. You can probably hear that and the arm should be good and frozen right now so it should slide on pretty easily. I may have to tap it a bit but we'll see.
So I got the bearing tapped on with the hammer. And I can press it on down. This is a pretty tight fit. You see, I'm going down until it gets flush. And that should be it. So now you can see the bearing will hit where this detent goes through, right there where my finger is. That wheel will ride against that detent pin, press it in, and that's your detent. These stops are already pressed in, so you don't have to do anything with those. And that's why you have to press the bearing all the way up so that the bottom side of this pin hits on those stops. Now we just got to get the spring in here. So it'll actually give us some tension and put our pins in we'll be good to go. All right, so here's the spring we're going to be installing. I got this from McMaster Car. You can find the part number online. And I had to uh, trim these legs down. These come pretty long. I trimmed about an inch and a half off of this one and about two and a half off of this one. And you want the legs to be facing the top of the transmission. Put it in here like this and reinstall this piece. All right, so now you can see the spring is in here. That leg will rest against this kind of raised piece on the transmission, and that's what gives it its spring back. I went ahead and pressed in the bushings, and then I'll talk about that later, but I've got that one ready to go. So put the pin in. If you're wondering which pin goes where, the pin with the groove, that goes up top. That's for fifth and sixth gear. The other one is for reverse. Also, the stronger spring, the heavy spring goes on reverse. And then uh, the way I have the spring, the way it's adjusted, I got a little bend in it, and that's just so this just barely rests against the fifth and sixth detent. What that's going to do is the shifter will be lined up with fourth and third. So if you just slide forward, you'll go in third, and then slide it back, and it'll go in the fourth. Only thing left to do is to put in the set screw for this one. You can see I already did the one on reverse. I drilled and tapped this for a quarter 20 set screw, put some thread sealant on the big set screw, Loctite on the small set screw. That's not going anywhere, and you don't have to machine that for a snap ring and put in that plastic or a rubber coated plug. All right, so I got this cleaned up, RTV, and it's ready to go, ready to be put on. I did want to mention again, uh, these little pins here. You have to be careful with those when you're putting this back on. You do not want that falling back into the transmission. What I did, I just used some petroleum jelly, and I like to mix a little ATF in there, uh, just for good measure, but petroleum jelly uh, mixes with ATF, so this will dissolve. It not only lubricates it a little bit, but it also uh, keeps it from moving. Still have to be very careful because you don't want this dropping down into the transmission. So, time to put this thing back together and then move on to the next part of the swap. All right, everything is sealed up, pretty much ready to go back in the car. I uh, still want to replace my uh, clutch fork pivot pin. I got a brass one coming. They're plastic from the factory and they tend to break and mine was broken when we took it out. One thing I wanted to mention is if you're using set screws right here like I am, make sure once you get the bell housing back on the transmission that you can go through all the gears because if you have these set screws too deep, then the screw will hit the pin as the pin's coming back through the bore and it won't allow you to get into the gate. So you can hear that the tent pin is coming in and it's not hitting the screw so it's allowing it to go forward. I did have to back my screws out a little uh, when I first did this because it was hidden. So I just loosened up this set screw, loosened back on these set screws a little bit and the uh, thread sealant hadn't set up yet so I could do that. If you do it quick enough uh, you can still adjust these once you get it uh, all put back together. So first, second, third, fourth and then the tenth fifth, sixth, and then hard to tent, reverse. And if you're wondering what my shifter setup is, this is a Turner Motorsports short shift kit. I also have upgraded bushings. I think this is Poly here and Delrin on this end. Uh, I used the SMG bolt uh, on the manual cars. There's just a pin through here. Uh, this has a shoulder bolt uh, that the SMG setup had. It just makes it a little tighter and also shimmed these bushings to make it really nice and tight. There's no play in that whatsoever. 
uh, got a dual shear selector rod that does basically the same thing. It's double shear, so it makes everything tighter. If you're swapping to a manual, you have to replace this joint. It's just the joint that goes between the shift rod coming out of the transmission and the selector rod that goes to the shifter. Uh, this too is also a factory BMW part, and it just goes between the bracket on the car that we'll have to add in a little bit and the transmission. So a couple things you have to get, but it's pretty straightforward. So that's my shifter setup. It's not the full on race shifter that I wanted, but it's really exactly what I wanted. It's not too tall. It doesn't have a reverse lockout. And I think it's the perfect medium and it's adjustable so I can dial it in the way I want it to be. So that's it for part one on the SMG to manual swap. Uh, come back for part two, where I'll go through how I did the clutch pedal, all the clutch hydraulics, uh, a little bit of wiring, and how I coded the engine computer to work with the manual swap. That video will come up right after this one, so it should be out real soon if it's not out already. Uh, in the meantime, you can check us out on social media. We're at Racing Rejects on Facebook and Instagram, and you can follow me on Instagram at NickFerris53. Thanks for watching.